anywhere else. Now, Jacob Wood, today we have 60 MMA warriors ready to bang it out in eight off the hook fights. We also have two female MMA fighters making their MMA debut. Do you want fighters? Yes, sir. That is unbelievable. You're going to see a lot of here tonight. The best of the bad kick down. And no further ado, let's go to win answer. Come on, Bob. Here we go. Toby, Toby, Toby. All right, Tim. Hey, fans. A lot of you guys have been here before. You guys know what the deal is. Before we get started, I'd like to thank a few of our sponsors. We got Spirit of Rhino, Gentlemen's Color Sponsors, for the first time. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get ready for the Star Spangled Banner singing it live here at TFA 28.
Rick James, I'm coming back to TFA. This is my second fight. Truth be told, it's going to be a short night. I'm going to go out there and post my game plan, and that's going to be the end of it. My name is Eddie Lloyd. I'm 29 from Long Beach, California. Fighting out of Sweatshop Fight Team. Uh, risky business, you know, that's what it is. Uh, freestyle fighter. Throw them hands, throw them feet, do what I got to do to make things right, you know, finish fights, get it over with, get my name out there. So let it be known, it's Risky B. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a spectacular Spangled Banner song. By this beautiful young lady, I'm here, Maverick the Soul Collector, Harvey with Jacob Woods, and we're here ready to commentate TFA 28 at the Longshoreman's Hall. Yes, Maverick, this is going to be another exciting night of eight off-the-hook fights that uh, Todd Meacham has geniusly put together. This will be the second event from the TFA in the Longshoreman's Hall, um, so we're looking for just as much excitement as we had in the first event last March. Well, let me tell you something. If it's based on seating capacity and standing room only, the show has it be hands down. There's not a seat left in this place. There's not an inch to stand in square. There's people standing on the concession stands. There's people standing on the booths. This place is just completely sold out. All right, TFA fans, let's get these fights started. tell you one thing this first fight this book with Rick James he is a fire starter he's nothing but piss and vinegar from the time the bell rings till it ends you're gonna see him continuously go stand up throw beautiful combination exchanges go to the ground he's relentless he has more gas than I've seen at the Chevron gas station he definitely had a lot of fire in him he had the right attitude he trains hard um, look for a strong fight from him Hey Rick, nice. welcome back to TFA at a True Warrior Fitness with Toby Greer, one of the great camps in, in the world today. And you're back, uh, you're three and one, yes. right? And you're going for that win tonight. You're going to be fighting Eddie Lloyd at the sweatshop in Brad Critchfield, and he's four and two. Oh. You guys have a really good record, equal record. Uh, I've never seen him fight before, I don't know too much about him. I've seen you fight, you're a great warrior. But tell me how um, you predict and prepare for tonight's event. I prepared very well. Um, as far as how it's going to go today, I'm planning on ending it early so I can go and you know, do my thing. And that's pretty much how it's going to go. This message was brought to you by Rick James, a.k.a. The Illest Rick James, a.k.a. C4, a.k.a. True Warrior Nation. Holla. He trains hard. Um, look for a strong fight from him. So this evening should be kicked off with a bang with, with Rick James and Eddie Lloyd. Eddie Lloyd coming from the sweatshop. I know those guys over there train also intensively, and they have a lot to do with their conditioning. Brad Cutchfield is, man, is uh, Eddie Lloyd's manager, and he's got a 4-2 and two record, but he's going to need that record going against Rick James. Let's see, you know, this is the welterweight class, which is 155 to 170, but they, both these fighters are weighed at a 155. They're both about the same height, so you're going to see it, a lot of athleticism from these guys. I see a lot of combinations, a lot of energy, um, and they have the, you know, the, the physical means to, to, to press the fight. Four and two, fighting out of the sweat shop. Give it up for Eddie Lloyd. Here comes Eddie Lloyd. Looks like he's got a large following with him. I, I like his music. It's kind of mysterious. You don't know what to expect from it. Kind of builds, um, but uh, that, that's, that's pretty cool. But Eddie describes himself as an all-around fighter, but he did mention to us that he would prefer to stand up if he could. So look for his hands or legs to fly when he's fighting. Well, that's here to say, you know, being a track and field guy, 
um, you know, those guys run on their feet. They're on their feet. So his feet might be his forte to be able to stand up and throw his hands. He did say that, you know, he won to turn pro. His last fight ended in the first round with a KO. He did say that, and that's a good point. His, his, his track and field experience has probably come into play here uh, tonight. Um, and so look for a lot of, uh, hopefully, a lot of punches and kicks from him tonight. Eddie Lloyd, welcome to TFA for your, for your first fight with TFA. I know your record's four and two, though, right? Yes, sir. So that's a great record. And um, how have you prepared tonight uh, for tonight's fight against Rick James, who is three and out? He's also a great athlete like yourself. Oh, uh, man, I haven't really got to, to do too much research on him. Um, the way I train for any fight is uh, I go for all around bases. You know, this is an MMA fight. It's not based on just one, one discipline in the fight. So wherever he's willing to take it, I'm willing to go. Uh, as far as what I do to train for is try to get my cardio right, keep my muscle endurance right, hope I don't burn out or gas out in any part of the round. Good attitude. I've been training hard. Look from a lot of energy from these guys. And again, I like his choice of intro music. It kind of builds a little bit. It started off slowly. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The audio guys got it down now because that bass is rocking. The sound levels are great. And the music has got this crowd ready to watch a rumble. Just for the record, guys, keep your flash photography off. Tom Meach, get back here. I need you. Alright, our matchmaker, Tom Meach, is one of the best in the business. He's been doing a long time. Yeah. These buddies in here are going to see plenty of flashes without you guys hitting them up with your cameras. You got it? But without further ado, let's get this party started right. Todd, we're going to hear this a lot tonight, but you're going to start first. Let's go. from Toby Greer. Let's see, here we go. We're calling off round number one. Ryan the man's at home. In the red corner is Rick James. In the blue corner is Eddie Lloyd. Rick James dousing the... Okay, the light is in my eyes. I can't see the color of his shorts. <laughs> red. Red. Looks like red. Yeah. Red shorts. And we have uh, Eddie Lloyd in the, blue, in the white shorts with the black stripe. Here we go. Round number one. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. And Rick James is coming in here with a 3-0 and o record. And Eddie Lloyd in the blue is coming in with a 4-2 and two record. Again, this is the welterweight division. Both these gentlemen are at 155 pounds. So look for a lot of action with these two. Yeah, it looks like they're both feeling themselves out. Probably got respect for each one another. And, uh, oh, Eddie Lloyd with a big high kick to the head right out the black. It looks like uh, Rick James might have his hands full a little bit here. Eddie Lloyd, not much information on him. Not a real impressive record, but four and two. A big takedown by Eddie Lloyd. Rick James trying to control and turn it back around. Yeah, you, you called that correctly, uh, Maverick. Uh, Eddie used his track experience and kicked uh, Rick in the head and then began to land some punches while Rick decided to, 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 to press him and take him down. And now it looks like Rick has him mounted at this point. Yeah, you know, track and field guys, high hurdlers, you know, they have that elongated groin and a big hip flexor. They can do large kicks to the head, especially with his kind of height. You know, he is taller than Rick James uh, by about three inches. Um, but Rick James looked like he's controlling it on the ground at this point. Yeah, that's a good point. It looks like he's got side mount, side control on, uh, on Eddie, and it looks like he's controlling him. It looks like Eddie's trying to scoot towards the wall. To, get, to use that to get up, but it looks like Rick has managed to keep control of him, although he's not throwing many punches, but now it looks like both of, the, both of these gentlemen are trying to stand up. Well, I'll tell you, Eddie Lloyd, that was just raw power standing up. There wasn't much technique in that. He looked like he just wanted to get up just out with his sheer strength. It looks like Rick is trying to keep the backside control, and oh, that's a big takedown. Big takedown by Rick James. That's just inexperience on Eddie Lloyd on learning how to sprawl or moving hip out when he's about to get taken down like that. Just in the first round. How is that was the first round, Jacob, and uh, it looks like the living, the billing's been living up to what it's expected. 
Uh, both guys starting out kind of slow, feeling each other out. Looks like both of them have respect for one another. That big high kick uh, from Eddie Lloyd, and also Rick James turning around with a huge suplex in the takedown. Yeah, it looks like Eddie came out a little stronger with with some of his with his kicks and punches, but Rick, to his credit, did take him down and, and controlled him with that slam, and then controlled him again on the ground. I like to see him do a little more damage to to Eddie when he has him mounted like that, not get too attached with him, try to separate himself, so he can throw some of those punches. Well, it looks like Eddie Lloyd's corner is giving him more instruction with hands and feet, telling him to stay up on his feet, use his length and use his height. Looks like he's giving him instruction on some some knees and some uh, straight punches and kicks to the head. Um, it looks like uh, Rick was a little bit more safer, felt more control on the ground. So I'm going to lead, lead to believe the second round, Rick's going to try to take this down and control it on the ground. And you're going to see Eddie throwing more exchanges from his feet. That's a good call. I, I'd uh, probably figure the same thing. Um, that kick from Eddie really came out of nowhere. To your point, he, he, to kick to somebody's head like that, really, from out of nowhere, you need extreme flexibility in your, in your hips. Uh, especially in the first round, your adrenaline's going, everything's tight, you haven't really loosened up yet. And there it is. Um, Rick James throwing a big kick and defending the takedown. Just like I said, Rick is going to try to keep Eddie on the ground. I think he feels more comfortable in the clinch and on the ground with him. And again, ladies and gentlemen, with the second round has just started with Rick James in the red corner and Eddie Lloyd uh, in the blue corner. And it looks like these gentlemen both have each other in the clinch. Oh, that was a standing suplex by Eddie Lloyd. Rick James took a hard one down, but Rick is still in it. And it looks like Eddie Lloyd is fighting with just pure tenacity right now. Rick's definitely skill level is a little bit higher, but Eddie is just using his athleticism straight out to put damage on Rick James. Eddie has just some raw strength in him during the first round. He just basically got up by using his, his uh, just by standing up. Um, and now he's just throwing Rick around with raw power. Yep, that was a, a, a looked like a standing uh, leg sweep that took him down. Eddie getting a little wild now and throwing. And a big standing, leaping suplex from the guard position of standing. It's a dangerous time because if you don't lose the opponent up on the back, he can get the choke in deeper and knock your own wind out. And it looks like he might have done that. Now it looks like Rick has Eddie back and he's throwing rapid punches. He's got to be careful not to hit the back of the head or the neck, but he can hit to the side or the, the front of his head. Well, at this point, it looks like Eddie's just trying to recuperate from it, get his wits together, and use his athleticism, his, his technique's not where it should be right now. He's sprawled out flat. He needs to be hooking Rick's legs in, sprawling himself out, pushing up off, and hopefully he can hang on enough for the second round to come in. Yeah, he, you, you can't stay in that position. That's one of the most dangerous positions to be caught on your back with somebody hitting you like that. Um, he looks like he got saved by the bell uh, in the second round. Well, that was a heavy round, too. But uh, Rick has got to not waste his time with those little rabbit punches on the side. You know, it's just expunging energy. They weren't doing much damage. You're actually using more energy doing that. I would have put more pressure down on Eddie at that point. Suffocate him, got my hips down anymore because Eddie didn't have the knowledge and the skill level to understand and learn how to escape from that position. Yeah, I, I agree. Th those punches weren't powerful enough to to knock him out or even to stop the fight. He should have maybe thrown a couple punches, maybe tried to choke in there and, and, and finish the fight. Agreed. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to be in that position. I think both guys are excited. That was a heavy two rounds. You've seen some good transitions from both fighters. You've seen some hell of a crazy moves. You know, the standing suplex is a dangerous one. I did it against the Fijian and almost knocked myself out. But that's just part of the game. That's street fighting. That's, you know, schoolyard chokes and schoolyard slams. Uh, we haven't seen those standing suplex here for, for a while, but it's always great to see uh, new moves being uh, shown here at the TFA. It's like we're about to start round three. Again, this has been a great match between uh, Rick James and, and Eddie Lloyd. We've seen takedowns, punches, mounts. It's just gone back and forth with both these guys. And here we go. Eddie Lloyd in the white shorts with the black stripe. Rick James in the red shorts. Round number three. It's pretty even right now at this point. So one fighter has got to dominate than the other, or it's going to go to a decision. And I don't know about you, Maverick, but I, that would be tough to score this this fight so far. It's gone back and forth. Both these guys have shown a lot of skill, a lot of and a lot of athleticism. I'm telling you, I got it scored evenly right now. Both guys, you know, executing and looking like oh, with a with a leaping sidekick from Eddie Lloyd. 
you know, Rick himself, uh, I guess, is just not strong enough for the power to control Eddie Lloyd on the ground. So his only alternative is to try to stand back up and try to use his technique to pick him apart. Uh, he's going to try to go for a takedown. Eddie needs to learn how to get his sprawl out a little bit better, keep his hips out away. And it looks like Eddie's going to try to deliver some big knees right here. And it looks like, oh, nice knee connection from Rick James. And Rick James has to use his technique at this point because Eddie Lloyd definitely is a stronger, more powerful fighter. Yeah, Eddie's a pretty big-sized guy for 155. I'd agree with you. I like the fact when, when Rick uh, is throwing those, uh, when he, when he uh, locks up with Eddie, he's throwing those uppercuts and knees. That's the best thing to do from that position. Yeah, being the shorter guy, catching a guy in the xiphoid process, man, could take the wind out of you in a heartbeat just making that one connection. Knees are, are brutal. You can drop people with a knee given the right force, given the right placement of it. And, and I think uh, Rick's doing a, doing a good job trying to land those. Yeah, well, Rick has got him in that guillotine at this point. He needs to jump and pull standing guard with that guillotine if he's going to go with that. If not, it's going to take a lot of win, and Eddie's out of that. Rick's probably maybe... Here we go. Here he's throwing more punches again. Yep, both of these fighters got to let go right now. It has to happen. That was a slip and a headbutt. That's the end of round three. We're going to have to go to the judge's card. Yeah, and again, I'm not really sure how to score that one. That was just back and forth. These judges got a, got a big job ahead of them. Well, that was fight number one here, exciting TFA. Sierra, 
Um, ready to fight again for TFA. Um, get ready to get back in there. I'm gonna kick some ass, <laughs> kick some ass right now, and come out with that W. This is Luis Flores coming out of Machado's at Redondo Beach. You know, I just want to say to the crowd, I'm gonna bring it. And that's how it's gonna go down, and I'm gonna chase that middle weight. Let's go ahead and do it. What's up? All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. I'm Maverick the Soul Collector, Harvey Ware at TFA 28 with my co part Jacob Woods, and we're getting ready to start for fight number two. All right, TFA fans, here we go. Fighting out of the red corner, standing 5'7", 155 pounds, he's a freestyle fighter fighting out of Kelowna, California. Give it up for Marco Sierra! Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, fight number two. We have in the red corner Marco Sierra with his 0-1 record. He is fighting against Luis Flores, a returner to the TFA with a 1-0 record. This is the welterweight division. Both these gentlemen are around 155 pounds. I tell you, Jake, if you remember the last fight, Luis went, man, he was going for it. I mean, this guy had more gas, like I said, than the local filling station. He just was going and going and going and going. Marco Sierra, we don't know much about him, but I tell you, if it's anything like the first fight, it's going to be a barn burner. Marco Sierra, welcome back to TFA. It's been a while. Tonight uh, you're fighting Luis Flores, and um, uh, he came off of a win recently. And um, I don't know when was your last fight. My last fight was March 17th, I believe. No, no, it's not this year. This year, right? Yeah. So how have you prepared for this event tonight with uh, Luis Flores? Well, it's been a year since I've been training for this fight. I actually took a little break, you know, trying to get my game better, and I'm gonna get this win this time. He told us. Uh earlier that um, he's been uh, even conditioning even more so wow so we'll see what happens uh, in this fight so uh, he also said he wants to keep it standing I think last time he did a lot of takedowns so he was on the ground quite a bit but this time he wants to keep it standing um, and try and uh, work on his hands and feet yeah he did mention that you know his stand-up has improved a lot better, and he felt that he had better hand skills, and he wanted to, you know, showcase that, and, and, and tonight's going to be the night that he's going to try to do that. He's 5'9", 160 pounds, a Muay Thai practitioner, and Pichado's. Give it up for Luis Flores! I do know that his opponent... Wow, now that's some serious music Luis is playing. I think that was this is even louder than the last bass song we heard. Well, I tell you one thing. The city may be packed, but they got the audio just right because these people are vibrating across like a damn old electric football game from Tycho back in the 1970s. This is uh, some pretty loud bass back in the 70s when we used to turn the bass up. Remember that? That was the kind of cool thing to do back then. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what it was about, the 1985 yeah. Nissan with ATs in the back. For those folks who are still in their 20s, they probably don't remember those days. But uh, if you're as old as Maverick and I are, you remember those days. Uh, but uh, this is probably the, the most bass I've heard in an intro music. I'm with Lewis Flores. Lewis, welcome back to your third fight with TFA. It's always a pleasure. It's an honor to have you back. You're going to be fighting Marco Sierra. Now, Marco uh, hasn't fought for a while, but he's pretty hungry right now. And he's come up in weight and so forth. And so, uh, any predictions about uh, how you prepared uh, for this uh, evening's event? I mean, I've just been preparing how I need to, you know, and putting in the work that I got. So, I'm here, to, I'm here to scrap, you know, stop his hunger and take him out, you know. Just, that's it, bottom line. Well, I tell you, like I said, they got the audio right. Todd Meacham matching these fights up. I mean, you've seen classic fights on TV. We've watched K1, Pride, UFC. You know, there's nothing like the matchups that they're putting on here. They're getting guys pound for pound, dollar for dollar, talent for talent, skill level for skill level, and letting two guys go at it at the same level. And that's what makes for a great fight. Agreed. You know, 
Um, and, and that's really what makes MMA such a great sport, you know? The matchup is key, you know? If some guy gets knocked out in two seconds, it probably wasn't the right fight for him, right? So the, the majority of these fights go the distance, they go back and forth, and that's all due to the matchmaking abilities of Todd Misham. That's right, you know, Todd and Joey been in it since the early 90s. They've been around the block quite a few times. Shoot, I remember even being back as fans and sitting in the front row of my fights. So they're connoisseurs of the game. They're technicians of the fight game. They know how to read through the bluff and read the actual technical ability of each fighter to match these fights up. Yeah, and it seems to get, every event seems to get better and better with the fighters, the skill level, what they bring to the table. And Todd puts on a, put on a great event, and that's why every time we come here, uh, we have a packed house. As many of you total fighting audience fans know, as the night goes on and gets longer, the fight gets shorter. So don't forget to give it up your amateurs. Well, if it continues like this, we are going to continue on to grow and just continue to need bigger and bigger and bigger facilities. That'll be idea. I'd like to see it go back to the days when uh, uh, when it was at the Long Beach Pyramid Building and uh, a couple other spots. Those are very those are very large venues. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Round one of uh, Marco Sierra in the red corner and Luis Flores in the blue corner. Yep, well, Luis caught that high mid kick from... Marco Rujas and trapped the leg and took a big takedown. The crowd's standing on our feet. We can't really see it in control. It looks like that Luis is back on his feet. So it looks like uh, Luis is trying to uh, kick Marco. Is still Now he's back up again. But I tell you, this has started just with a lot of energy. Luis was serious when he said he was working on his condition. Well, he said that. He did say he wanted to keep it standing up. It looks like that's what he's doing. He's staying on his feet, delivering the knees trying to get out of the clinch, dropping the elbows, throwing the uppercuts, but it looks like Marco's trying to take the fight back down. I'll tell you one thing about Marco, he does train at Tim Kreitzman's gym, and Tim runs a tight ship, turns out great warriors. He is a great warrior himself, having fought in the last couple of TFAs. That's right. Being able to practice what you preach tells a lot about a man. He doesn't just cheat the art, he practices the art, and he comes here and showcases his ability to strike and fight at a competitive level. I'll tell you one thing about Luis, he, he, he kept to his word. He's throwing those combinations. And I think he knocked down Marco, and now they're on the floor somewhere, and I can't really tell what they're doing because we can't see anything. Yeah, it looked like Marco caught that one on the chin, and Luis just jumped on and capitalized, and it might have been too much for Marco to recuperate. That's it, round number one, fight number two. Looks like we got a, a referee stoppage. Luis Flores, the champion.
first day, but if we had to go to the ground, we had to go. You know, it turned out good, and that's all we could ask for, you know. I showed up to fight, we did it. I came up with the victory. Thanks, CFA, all the fans, and everybody that came out to see me. Why are you definitely good? You said you were going to be You said you were going to show up and 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 Hey, what's up? This is Sergio Casanon, fighting out of Craig's Men's MMA. I'm 3-0 right now. My last opponent, I knocked him out with a head kick, and I'm fighting Henry Mendez. This is going to be my fourth fight, so hopefully I knock him out the same way. This is Henry coming back to you from... I'm Martinez, my Thai kickboxing team. This is going to be my third fight in TFA, and I'm ready to bring it. I'm fighting Sergio Castanon, and I know he's a striker, and I'm a striker too, and I'm willing to stand and do whatever it takes to win this fight. All right, here we go. The fight number three. Sergio Castellano, don't have much information on him. But Henry Mendez, you know he's been here before. He's five foot ten and has a little bit of experience under his belt and he comes to bang. Alright, let's get these two warriors out. Fighting out of the red corner, stands five foot ten, 145 pounds, a Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu practitioner. Mendez is making his uh, walk out. I like his choice of music too. A little more bass. Sounds good. That's so, fight number three. Sergio Castellano don't have much information on him. But Henry Mendez, you know he's been here before. He's five foot ten and has a little bit of experience under his belt and he comes to bang. I was, I was talking earlier about these guys. Five foot ten, 140. Henry is, and then Sergio's 5'8", 140, so these guys are lean and mean and ready to bang. I mean, it's crazy to think 5'10 guys are fighting at 140 pounds. 5'10, you are a 185-er, you know what I mean? Minimum. And uh, both these guys look, look pretty built. They're not skinny guys, they got muscles, they look athletic, they're just lean and mean and in great fighting shape. It just shows you how the game has changed so, so much. By the fact that these guys standing 5'8 and 5'10 are fighting at 140 pounds. And remember this, it's always an honor to have you fight for TFA. You're a great champion. And I know you want this one very bad tonight after the last fight, you know. And so I know you went back and you worked very hard with your coaches up till now. So tell me a little bit about how you feel about tonight's event. Uh, I feel good. I'm glad to be back in the cage. I'd like to thank Todd and everyone for giving me the opportunity to fight again. You know, I want to redeem myself tonight and do good again. I'm going to strike intelligently, defend myself however way I can, and hopefully if, if tonight goes my way, then I'm going to get the win tonight. They're getting more and more athletic. Add that to some skill, and that's a dangerous combination. You know, it's like a Uzi. It's this compact thing with full auto. They can do all kinds of damage in a real short amount of time. 130 pounds, a mixed martial arts fighter, out of Christ's MMA. Give it up for Sergio Castellano! We'll probably see more energy than the last two fights, because these guys are 140 pounds. I'm with Sergio Castellano. Sergio, uh, always good to see you back at TFA. You have a heck of a fight last time. That was a heck of a knockout. Yeah. Now you're going against Henry Mendez, and he lost his last fight. I mean, he's uh, really hungry for, uh, to come in and get a win. So, and I know you want to keep your record going, obviously. So, tell me a little bit how you predicted uh, tonight's event. Basically, just how I knocked the last dude out, I really want to get in there, man. I've been dying to get back in this cage, knock this dude out too, you know, keep going on a winning streak. 
Hopefully before I know, I have my belt with me too, and I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna let anyone take it. And if he wants it, he's gonna have to take that shit from me, because it ain't going nowhere. Well, we got an Al Kreisman student again, fighting out of this corner against an Al Martinez, Muay Thai guy. So we're gonna see how this matchup runs. <laughs> That's a good point, Maverick. Um, Tim does a great job training and breeding these fighters. This will be the second fighter from his camp tonight. And again, he's fighting uh, Henry from uh, Al in Wilmington with, with Al Martinez. All right. Well, we're going to see it here tonight. We're going to see it here right now. We're in fight number three. It's the first round at exciting TFA 28 here at the ILW Memorial Hall. Thus far, two great fights. And here we go in fight number three. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The bell has just rung again. Sergio Castanon in the red corner and Henry Mendez in the blue corner. Looks like both these guys are showing some respectful distance towards each other and kind of feeling themselves out, as they say. Yep, you know, a lot of these guys, especially being newcomers here, they come on full speed or they, they do the dance. It looks like everybody is being methodical tonight. Professionalism is in the air and people are taking their time with their strikes and their combinations. I like that leg kick by, uh, by Henry Mendez. That was a nice, solid kick. Yep, Henry's got that infamous spinning back fist that he used last time. I remember seeing it, and it looks like he tried to use it again today, right now. But we're going to see. Both these guys still feeling each other out, both keeping it on their feet. Looks like Henry's hands are moving a little bit more. And now he's got a leg trap. Oh, into a wizard. Back to their feet. I tell you, these guys are exciting. These lightweights can just go from one thing to another. Oh, that was beautiful takedown from Henry and for, uh, from... Uh Sergio, unfortunately, the, um, they kind of rolled into a, a different position where, they're, they're, where Henry has Sergio up against the cage now. To teach the cage, instruct the cage, use the cage as your tool. You have to fight in the cage and train in the cage, and you understand that you need to utilize that square fence, that octagon, to help you out. The cage can be your friend, and now it looks like Henry has Sergio and a guillotine. But now... Guillotine schoolyard style choke. Um, if Henry can hang on, that's gonna be it. But we'll have to see where, what um, Sergio's uh, defense is. Seems to be hanging on. He's trying to roll out of it. You gotta take pressure off your hips and roll into it. Looks like he's let go. Here we go in round number two. That was an exciting round. That was, and it looks like Sergio was saved by the, saved by the bell there. Uh, otherwise, he may have been choked out, but he lives to fight another round against, uh, against Henry. Well, you know, the Kreitzman team, bottom line is they came to fight. They're not going to tap. They're not going to give up. They're going to give it their all from the beginning to the end. And these guys are trained to fight the three-minute rounds, and they're going to try to push all three of the rounds regardless. You know, if they've been training right, they've been put in chokeholds hundreds of times, so... They know the drill, they shouldn't panic. There's a technique to getting out of chokes, and that's been drilled in these guys. And that's why they can take it for as long as they've been taking it. That's right. Okay, put your mouth right on it. <laughs> Here we go, round number two, an exciting TFA 28. We have Sergio Castaneda in the red corner. Fighting again, Henry Mendez in the blue corner. Thus far, it's been a pretty exciting fight. You've seen a lot of energy from these guys. It's been back and forth and back and forth. But you'd expect that at this weight. This is the featherweight. This is at 140 pounds. I don't think the TFA has, has had many fighters below 140. So this is about uh, as light as you've seen in the TFA recently. Well, they're trying to get some, some air back into Sergio. I think that choke took a little bit out of him. The cornermen are back out. Looks like the referee is going to start the fight. Um, some life's coming back into Sergio's uh, limbs right now because that choke can take a lot out of him. Here we go, round number two. I agree, Maverick. Oh, and it looks like uh, Henry landed a nice jab right there.
again, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, nice takedown by uh, by Henry Mendez. Now he's got side control. He's trying to mount Sergio in the red, but he's doing a good job with that side control. Now the ref. I don't know if his head hit the cage or what happened, but it's a referee stoppage in the beginning of round number two. Woo, baby! Hard work, hard work, and dedication. I, can't, I don't even know what happened. Let's, uh, let's go find out. Mike, will you face the right. camera? Thank you. I've been fighting MMA now for one year. I'm fighting out of King's MMA. Master trainer there is Fernando Bottega. I've been training Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai and wrestling as well. It's an honor to fight for TFA and I'm looking forward to my first amateur fight and more fights to come in the future. Here we go! Total Fight Alliance. Daniel, the Long Beach bad boy De La Cuerva is back for number four. I'm defending my title, super heavyweight champion. This is going to be a good fight. Tavita, I look forward to it, man. Let's do this. Well, it looks like we're moving the fights up. We're in the round. We're in fight number four. Daniel's been here, no stranger to the event, the TFAs. He's 4 0. He's gone from 185 to 205. Now he's at a whopping 239 to fight for this super heavyweight title against Tavita Tofua, the rugby player from New, or from New Zealand. In talking to Tavita earlier, Tavita said that he's actually from New Zealand and he has a background in rugby. He's only been doing MMA for for one year, 
but uh, being a rugby player, you got to be pretty tough. A lot of those skills, all those scrums that they have, when they're locked together, that's going to come into play here when he's going to be fighting. Uh, going to be fighting Daniel. That is well said, Jacob. <laughs> I'm the great athlete here, Tavita Tufa. Welcome to TFA for your you. first fight. This is your first amateur fight. First amateur fight. First amateur fight. fight. Now you're going against Daniel De La Cuerva. Uh, mm -hmm. He's uh, been a, quite a champ. He's won four fights, and uh, I know he wants to keep his belt. And I know you want that belt. And so tell me a little bit about how you prepare and predict for tonight's event. Well, of course, I'm going to begin for the W. Uh, I'll be training really hard for this. And, uh, We'll see you guys from there. God willingly, I win. But uh, good luck to Daniel too, and hopefully we have a good show for the people and they'll want to come back for another fight. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel De La Huerva at 4-0 is making his entrance with some pretty cool fight music, kind of similar to uh, some of the others with some, with some heavy bass. Yep, the Regulators is his song and he likes to regulate, buddy. <laughs> the Regulators, but I like it. It's got a, it's got a cool beat to it and uh, he's used it consistently, so uh, you got to tip his hat to him. And again, Daniel was saying earlier, that he wants to stand up a little more and he said look for some excitement in the first round so he's going to come out strong according to his words well he's had some hella fights here and they've been some exciting ones with some big boys but let me tell you something about a rugby player <laughs> those guys are tough hands down and this guy he's got four boys at home he's a one tough daddy i'm sure yeah it's a good point Daniel De La Cueva, welcome back. Your fourth show with TFA. That's right. You got a belt. You yes, worked hard for that belt. I know you worked very hard with the sweatshop, Brandon Critchfield, your coach, and uh, you're defending your belt tonight. Yes, sir, I am. Yeah. Someone's coming after my belt. I uh, worked hard for it. It's mine. I own it, and they're not going to take it easy from me. I've trained on some new things to look forward to uh, to having an exciting fight this time. Hey, and Tavita, man, it's me and you in the ring tonight, man. I look forward to you. Mad respect. And uh, thanks again, Todd and TFA. Let's get this on.
go, ladies and gentlemen. Starting the third round. Starting the first round, excuse me, of our, of our fourth fight of the night. We have Tavita Tafu in the red corner and Daniel De La Huerva in the blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen, both these fighters are going at it. Both locked uh, into each other. Um, you've seen a lot of brute strength right here. But it looks like both these guys are trying to take each other down. Yep, a little interview with, uh, with the fans here. It's nothing but exciting here at TFA. Looks like Daniel is in that belly guard, what we call, an over and under one arm trap. And these guys are going to the ground and they got about, probably got close to 600 pounds in there right now. Looks like uh, Tavita just uses brute strength and, and drug, dragged Daniel down to the ground. It looks like he's in uh, half guard right now, which means uh, Tavita has one leg in between uh, uh, Daniel's two legs, which is an advantageous position to be in if you're in the top in MMA because you can use your weight to smother your opponent while throwing punches, maybe elbows uh, at the same time. And it's a great place to rest. <laughs> so it looks like, you know, uh, Tavita or Vita is trying to capitalize on this position that he has right now on Daniel. Daniel said he wanted to keep it to his feet and stand up more, so he needs to get up off his feet right now and make something happen. To your point, he's got 260 pounds on him, and now Tavita is throwing some punches while he's mounted, although Daniel's doing a good job trying to shift his weight and get uh, Tavita off balance. Well, I tell you, this might be a wake-up call for Daniel. He doesn't like to get punched like that. I don't think no one does. He needs to pull him in close or try to push off and get to his hip and get out on the 10-second clapper. Yeah, and it looks like Daniel is holding Tavita close to him so he can't get higher and throw punches. That was a heavy round one, and it looks like Daniel's got his work cut out for him today. He's going to want to know not to go back to the ground with him, slow his breathing down, and try to extra stand-up that he talked about earlier today. Yeah, that's a good point. I think Tavita did a pretty good job on the ground for a guy who's never had a, had a fight before. Did a good job... Um, you know, did a good job mounting him and then throwing those punches, which seemed to be pretty effective. It, it actually was pretty surprising. That's why you never know in amateur fighting, you know, what these guys actually have. Granted. Stay up. Hey, under, under, under. And here we go, we're back live at exciting TFA 28 at the Longshoreman's Hall. We have Daniel De La Curva against Tavita Tafua, his first fight, and it looks like he's a seasoned veteran out there against Daniel. It does look like he's, both these guys are a little tired. Now they're hearing the chance of, I think, Danny, which is his fan base here, which I'm sure he has tons of fans trying to, trying to inspire him. Yeah, well, this is Danny's home. This is what he started out with. And so he's got good crowd uh, response here and a good crowd support. He's just going to have to keep it on his feet more and keep banging with this big New Zealander. Yeah. And, oh, and it looks like Tavita punched Daniel pretty good. And now Daniel in for a takedown, and both these fellows are locked up. Tavita caught him on that quick chin check. It was a little uppercut chin check. And it looks like he's got back down in ground control on Danny. And this is surprising me here for this guy having an 0-0 record. Yeah, it surprises me as well. And now it looks like he's got Daniel pushed up against the cage and is trying to take his back. And now I can't tell what position he's in, but maybe he has Daniel in his guard at this point. Yeah, it looks like Tavita is continuing to pull guard and try to keep uh, control with Danny. Danny needs to, to break that guard and either go to full mount or get to the side or try to get back to his feet and throw hands with him. I agree. You can't throw powerful punches while you're in someone else's guard because they're going to be using their legs to, to, to move you back or forward or they're going to be holding you down so you can't throw those punches. Um, so he needs to break his guard, regain his composure, pass his guard and then throw those punches. I'm very surprised that uh, Vita 
has this much uh, uh, confidence on the ground and is able to withstand with Danny and keep the control of where it is on the ground. I know both guys are pretty heavy. They're a little weary for Terry right now. They're going deep into the second round, and you're going to see it start to wear on their, on their performance. It looks like Daniel's doing a good job throwing some body shots, which have got to wear Tavita down. But to your point, Tavita is showing a lot of poise and skill to, to, to have Daniel in his guard and not panic. Well, you see, Tavita is a weird for wear now. He's out of gas. If Daniel can just keep his composure, put the rear naked choke in, and it looks like he did it, and he tapped the big museum. Let's go talk to the fighters.
say thank you for everyone that came out to my last fight. I'm glad I gave you guys a knockout. You know, I'm only 19 years old, but I'm the hardest worker out there. You ready? I'm gonna come after that belt. See this? I got this paper after my last fight where I lost. I beat myself. I don't plan on that happening again. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at TFA 28 Spring Smackdown. We are in our fifth fight of the night. It's been an exciting night uh, so far in this fifth fight. We're going to have Samuel Ray Barrera in the red corner versus Darius Carter in the blue corner. And this is actually a rematch uh, of a great fight they had uh, only two months ago. That's right. Both fighters back to prove again. One to prove that he fought the fight and won the fight and the other one to prove that it was, wasn't just a fluke. So you're going to see both guys be very complacent. One guy's got the, the confidence hand, and the other guy's got a lot of pride to fucking pay back. All right, TFA fans, got three fights left. Bring in some more of the big boys. Fighting out of the red corner, standing six foot three, 215 pounds. A little bit of fighter, fighting at a CG fight camp. Darius, and Darius has something to prove. He said he'd been uh, working on his composure. So unlike football, where when every play starts, you got to go gangbusters. Uh, MMA, it's okay to pace yourself. And he's realizing that. He, per his words, he said he gassed out a little bit, but he wants to change that a little bit. And you're going to see a new fighter from from Darius. And you're absolutely right about that, Jacob. Football is a very short burst, explosive sport. It's a different type of conditioning, a different type of training. MMA, you have to be have composure. You have to be methodical, and you gotta have a game plan. It's explosive at times, but it's more methodical than people realize. Uh, he obviously paid for that because he gassed out a little bit later. So hopefully, you're gonna see a new, uh, a new Darius. I do know that Samuel, just like Darius said, he wanted to slow down a little bit. So maybe this fight might start a little slower and then build. Well, yeah, Samuel wants to slow down a little bit because when Darius came out, he got chin-checked about six or seven times, and to Samuel's credit, he weathered the storm. Samuel Ray Barrera, welcome back for your second fight with TFA. You had a great win in your first fight. Now, you're going to be fighting Darius Carter, and he lost his last fight. He's real hungry. He's worked hard. So tell me a little bit about uh, your prediction for this evening. Um, it's going to be a really good fight. I'm going to be pressing forward most of the time, just get in his face. I really just want to throw some power, uh, controlled power punches just to make him scared, to make him think about what he has to do, and tag him and finish him. And that's basically it. I do know that Samuel, just like Darius said, he wanted to slow down a little bit. So maybe this fight might start a little slower and then build. Well, yeah, Samuel wants to slow down a little bit because when Darius came out, he got chin checked about six or seven times. And to Samuel's credit, he weathered the storm. So this time he's going to be a little more cautious watching those hand combinations and not step into those straight hands that had him dazed in the first round last fight. And he makes more shots fighting out of Long Beach, California. Give it up for Darius Carter! Darius has applied his work ethic to the MMA structure. We're going to probably hopefully see a different athlete come out right now. You notice his music is more mellow, it's a lot calmer, it's not headbanging was before. He's coming in to ease the ladies and pay some dues. That's a good point. I didn't even really notice the music until, uh, I think because I'm used to such loud music tonight, that his music started rather calmly. And I think for your comment, uh, Maverick, uh, to be a Division One football player, you got to be a premier athlete. Now, he played... Uh, defensive end, 
uh, at Kent State University, a defensive end. And I, I used to play a little football in high school. It was one of those very tough positions. You got to be very physical. You're always trying to take down a running back. You're trying to tackle the quarterback. Um, you're always in it. You're always getting mixed up and banged around. Darius Carter, welcome back to TFA. I know you've been working extremely hard. I know you're very disappointed about the last fight. And um, you've gone back to the drawing board. Like you said, you've been working on a lot of things with your coach, Bradley, and, and the sweatshop camp, sweatshop camp. So tell me a little bit about uh, how you feel about tonight's event. Um, I feel a lot better. Um, most of the things that I've worked on, uh, not just physically, but I've been more mental. Uh, that was kind of my downfall in the last fight. I kind of lost my composure and you know, zeroed in when I should have been more composed and kept my game plan. So. I've worked mostly on being as composed as possible in pressure situations and just, just making sure that I keep a cool head by myself, you know. So I, I, um, I was disappointed at the last fight, but, you know, I learned a lesson from it, and that's, that's the most I could ask for. So I've tried to apply what I learned from that fight and apply it to this one. We'll see what happens this time. That's also true. You know, there's a lot of things that go along with getting where he went, and the work structure getting there. So like I said, hopefully he's going to apply all that work ethic to a different style of training for a different sport and show his athleticism here tonight and get that pride back in his pocket that fell out last fight. Yeah, I know the last fight they had, Darius came out with a bang. He threw so many hurricane combination. It looked like a little hur mini hurricane. Let me tell you something, it's going to be a barn burner. It's going to be an exciting fight for sure. Both these gentlemen are lean and mean and ready to fight. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Round one, again, we've got Sam and Ray Barrera in the red corner versus Darius Carter uh, in the blue corner. And let me tell you, even five fights into this night, this room is electrifying. Everybody is on their feet. There's not a seat not filled in the house. It's about to happen right here at TFA 28. And you notice, as the night goes on, more and more people are standing. Usually more and more people want to sit because they're so tired, but that's just due to the electricity of the fight. Well, Samuel came out banging this time, throwing straight punches on Darius. Darius just waiting, sitting back, throwing the blocks. Looks like he has his underhooks in. Samuel anticipating a takedown. Darius will get control. Now we'll see Darius on a leash a little bit. Yep. It looks like a roll reversal with last time. This last time, but next time Samuel is throwing some, has landed some punches on Darius, but Darius does a good job of weathering that storm, and now he's got Samuel up against the cage. Well, it looks like a complete opposite of last fight. Roles have been reversed. Samuel chin checking Darius, catch him on the chin two times. Darius straggling back, and now it looks like Samuel once again with a big leg kick and a strike. This is going to be a really interesting fight to watch. You're seeing both these guys come. Oh, it looks like Darius has landed some good punches. These fighters just going back and forth, hitting with jabs, uppercuts, a Superman punch attempt by, by Samuel. These guys are giving everything that they got. I'll tell you, I did see Samuel execute that Superman punch. Both these guys in the first round, both taking some hard licks, whereas last fight, Darius just pummeled Samuel in the first round, and Samuel took a lot of punishment. So this false fight so far has started out better from Samuel, even though he won the last fight. Yeah, uh, agreed. He's being much more, um, pacing himself quite a bit more. And now he's prodding Darius to, to exchange with him. Oh, and it looks like he got knocked down by Samuel Ray. Darius got knocked down, but to his credit, he's up and attempting a takedown. I tell you, what a fight reversal. The complete opposite from last fight. Samuel this time and he jumped into the guillotine but Darius is out of it. Samuel dropping bombs from north and south, east and west. Let me tell you, this fight is completely turned around. A surprise for the chin on Darius. He's weathered the storm tonight and it's going to be one hell of a round too if it goes in there. Yeah, I thought the fight was over but no. To his credit, Darius weathered that storm, got up, attempted to take down and had out and was in Samuel's guard throwing punches to his body as if nothing had happened. And look at the sportsmanship from Samuel. Samuel hugs Darius, 
right after the round, Darius doesn't even know how to answer to that. This is amazing. This is a complete revolt reversal from the last fight. Darius in fight number one just gave it to Samuel. Samuel went into the storm with many punches. This time, Samuel has delivered numerous combinations to Darius. I'm excited to see is if in round number two, Darius returns a reversal and chin checks Samuel. You never know what to expect in these fights. That's what makes them so exciting. Uh, and again, uh, both these fighters landed some solid punches. I thought Darius was out, but to his credit, being such a great athlete, he, uh, he doesn't even seem weathered. The average person would have been knocked out for sure. But these are premier athletes, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let me tell you, there's some serious bragging lights on the rhyme right now. Whether it was a fluke or whether it was a win. And Darius looks like, man, I can't let this happen again. He's staying strong thus far. Samuel seems to have a lot of confidence in his step. A lot of arrogance, even daunting Darius emotionally. He definitely was taunting him towards the later round part of the first round. And now it looks like both these guys are starting the second round. Um, exchanging blows. Again, Darius looks like he landed a, a straight shot there and an uppercut, but both these fighters are keeping kind of a respectful distance here in the second round. Well, Darius blocking those leg kicks appropriately, checking the leg kick, blocking to the head. Looks like he's slowing down. Samuel throwing some haymakers at Darius. Darius following his game plan, though, trying to keep some composure and not blow his wide. It looks like that's going to work out good for him in the round number two here. It looks like, to his credit, he is keeping his composure and like you said I remember now Samuel does like those kicks and followed by those haymakers that seems to work for him. Well thus far it's been a total role reversal both fighters making combinations and Darius now holding his composure trying to keep a calm cool head and not showboating Samuel needs to get his hands up and stop with the taunting and defect more damage. I agree that taunting doesn't do you any favors it, it it doesn't look good when you're watching it on videotape later, um, and it's not very respectful. But um, it looks like Darius is keeping his composure. Well, Samuel's confidence level is really high right now, but Darius seems to have developed his game plan now. He's being complacent. He's being patient. He's keeping his hands up. Samuel's dropping his hands, and that might be a fall to his chagrin with his hands down. Darius throwing a wild punch could check him on the chin. I agree. You got. You got. Given the size and skill level of these guys, you got to have your hands up, even if it blocks part of the punch, because you could easily be knocked out by one of Samuel's haymakers and one of the or one of the straight shots by Darius. Well, I tell you, Darius is doing much better today. That was a high axe kick to the head. I think both guys weary for wear came on down. But I tell you, Darius is following his game plan. He's sticking to the program. He's back on his feet immediately, and you might see a different outcome tonight with Darius. I think the tide has turned in this fight. Looks like Jared Darius is showing a little more composure, um, landing some more combinations. The, the uh, that spinning back kick that um, Samuel did, unfortunately, wasn't a lot of speed in that. So Darius was able to kind of just charge him and take him down because Samuel had his back turned. And Samuel starting to showboat and do those extreme combinations. That might be a fall to his Sharin. I think Daniel needs to come out, settle down, throw straight combinations, leg kicks, take Darius down because Darius came prepared today. He's a different fighter, he's got gas, he's being complacent, and he's picking and choosing his combinations. That's a good point. Samuel needs to change his game plan a little bit, calm down, again, throw those combinations. Samuel does have very powerful punches. He had knocked Darius down in their first fight. And his haymakers, you've got to be careful for those because he throw, kind of throws those out of nowhere. Yep, well, it looks like Darius popped right up out of the seat, you know, so his conditioning is probably right where it needs to be. He seems to be keeping a cool heart within himself, keeping his, keeping his breathing to a minimal. And Samuel over there still having that confidence attacking from the other side of the ring. We're going to see right here in round number three what happens. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, beginning of round number three. Darius Carter in the blue, Samuel Ray Barrera in the red. And again, both these fighters are probably feeling the effects of being in the third round. But Samuel's got to be careful with those slow head kicks because Darius is going to take advantage of that and throw some combination. That's what I'm saying. It looks like Samuel is starting to get lazy, and he keeps dropping his hands. Darius may not be making great combinations and making good connections, but his hands are up, 
and he's shooting straight punches. And that could be to Samuel's downfall. He's, he's got to keep his hands up and execute a better fighting style right now. I agree. Darius, being the, a little bit taller of the two, is throwing that straight jab and landing it while Samuel has his hands down. Well, Darius is being tacked to technical like he said he wanted to do. Maybe it's not doing much effect, but it's pretty straight. And that was a, a hard elbow from Samuel. Samuel's got to keep his hands up because even Darius being tired, those straight shots could kick you on the chin just right. I agree. Even a jab can knock you down. you got to be very careful. Obsessive when you're tired, you got to be careful. To, you got to always have your hands up. Let me tell you, this is going to be a hard one to score. It's definitely going to be a hard one to score. Both fighters got to be over-dominant and, and, and control this last round because this is going to be a tight one on the scorecard. I agree. I don't know. I don't know who's winning this fight. I, it would be very tough to, to judge this fight at this moment. One of these two are going to have to step it up and make a statement at the end of this third round uh, to ensure that they get a win uh, in this fight. But it looks like both these fighters are getting a little bit tired right now. Yeah, Darius' hands are starting to drop. He's trying to keep them up. Both tires are out of gas. There's 10 seconds left. This is all or nothing right here, right now. And it looks like this thing's going to go to a decision. It's just a drag. Out of gas completely. Great fight, ladies and gentlemen. That was just a straight-up schoolyard brawl between these two.
with you guys. Thank you so much. I'll never quit on you guys. Thank you. Are we gonna see you again? Hell yeah, I'll be back. I'm only 19 years old. This is what I do. Thank you. Hell yeah, he said, ladies and gentlemen, give it up to Sandy Ray Morel. This, this is your time. Girl. Tyrone, you want to stay up to the to this side, please? Thank you. Mr. Chatham, Hollywood. I'm the only kid that's weighing in with these polo shades. That's what Hollywood do. <laughs> what, does Hollywood, what does Hollywood do? Hollywood do everything better than you. <laughs> and then better than you. Except for stand still. <laughs> 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 181.4. Okay. Put your hand down. Negative. Show up to the fight. I will be there. Show up. I will be Don't there. Don't run. I'm the hurricane. I'm going to punch you. <laughs> I'm going to punch you. You fall. I'll get my hand raised. That's the plan. Hey, no ad libbing. Stick to the script. All right? Okay, gentlemen, hurricane. good luck to both hurricane. of you. Doppler effect, homeboy. Get it right. Good luck to both of you. <laughs> well, Jacob, here we go. Another nearly senseless scene to be ceased to be cis fight with Cheatham and his opponent with a supposed table droppage on his toe. I wanted to tell him, hey bro, you're turning pro, you better hope your injury you got is a table falling on your toe, because this is what we call fighting. I've never seen anybody get defeated by a table before they uh, stepped into the cage, but there's a first for everything, I guess. Only here at TFA, <laughs> you'll see the wildest things like that. Found the guy by the name of Tyrone Bentley. Tyrone! Your name is not Tyrone no more. It's Tiffany. I'm going to call you Tiffany because you have man moves. Now, I like the judge moves. He's about a 38 double D.
Hi, this is Jonathan. I'm fighting out of Long Beach. Um, I've been training for four years and um, I'm ready to fight. You know, I'm, I'm just I'm so proud to fight for TFA and I'm ready to go. So whoever is on my way, well, I'm sorry guys because I'm looking forward to, to be a champ and, 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 get, and be pro. Fire on. <laughs>Moving on to uh, to our sixth fight of the night, we've got Jonathan Kiros in the red corner. Jonathan fought at the last TFA, and we have Felipe Alvarez in the blue corner making his MMA debut. And based on the crowd response, I think Felipe may have a few more people here than Jonathan. All right, Seth, hey, we got two fights left. I want to remind everybody in here: these guys are amateurs. All right. tell you something. We're in fight number six, and I don't think one person has left the auditorium. I mean, usually most places, you're, you're halfway through the card, you're 33 quarters away through the card, the event's pretty much cleared out, unless you got a big title main event. But let me tell you, everybody stayed, everybody's here for these eight powerhouse fights here with TFA. Oh, I agree, Maverick. Here we are, May 17th, 10 p.m. on a Friday night. Everyone's been working hard all week. You think they'd be tired, but no. Majority of them are standing, watching these fights, screaming and yelling uh, for their fighters, and that's and that's the great thing about the TFA. It, it has a great level of energy and excitement to every event. Exactly. You know, you can call these guys amateur fighters because they got a shirt on, but the bottom line is, Jacob, <laughs> they're fighting just like you or me or anyone else in the UFC Pride or K1. A fight is a fight, no matter where you call it or where it's at. Jonathan Corzo, good to see you back at TFA. I know you want some uh, sweet revenge. Yeah. You had a little tough time last time, but uh, you know, hey, that's the way things go sometimes. I know you're working very hard now on this next fight you're gonna have with Felipe Alvarez, who's, um, this is his premier fight tonight as an amateur. So tell me, how, uh, how do you uh, predict for tonight? Well, I feel, you know, I think I'm gonna win. That's what I train for, and I hope, you know, I do my job and I you know I show up what I can do. Last time I couldn't, I couldn't really show what, a, what, I'm, what I can do because, you know, shit happened, but now I'm ready. And this is the time to, to prove what I am and, and prove what I can do. I think Jonathan had a pretty lax music as well, but uh, Felipe's got a interesting music fight music as well. But uh, I like the build up that this song has. Well, let me tell you something. The funny thing about Felipe Alvarez, he's a, he's an O and O fighter, supposedly his debut. We talked a little bit about his style, and he said that his style was orthodox. I have yet to ever see a fighter say that their style is orthodox. Now maybe. Unorthodox, I've used quite a few times in my career, but orthodox, they're basically saying you, you fight by a book. That is a little strange to use that term orthodox. I'm not quite sure what that means, but 
We'll have to wait and see. He does train out of Arriva Machado in Hawthorne. He has been training MMA for a while at, at, at four years. Um, so we'll see if that training will pay off for him tonight. Um, but um, we'll just have to wait and see. You never know. Like you said, you never know. And the excitement here at TFA, you never know. Because these fights could go either way. As well matched as they can be, you never, it's always unexpected and never yet to be seen what the capabilities are, the potential of these fighters that are coming out at this amateur level. I'm with Philippe Alvarez. Philippe, welcome to TFA, your first fight. It's an honor to have you here. You're a great athlete. You're going to be fighting Jonathan Cuerzo. He's, uh, he's zero and one. He lost his first fight. I know he's hungry. And I know that you work very hard with your coach here on this show. So tell me a little bit about uh, how you prepared for uh, tonight. Well, I've been doing uh, double training twice, uh, four times a week with uh, my coach, Julio Santos, uh, Hikaru Lima Bender, and uh, yeah, just training hard. This is going to be an exciting fight. I remember Jonathan's last fight. Uh, it went to a decision, but it was an exciting fight. Um, he showed a lot of energy. Threw a lot of punches, attempted a lot of takedowns, so probably look for the same thing uh, from him uh, in this fight. Once again, we got another guy, 5'9", pushing 5'10", at 155 pound weight class, man. These guys are getting taller and thinner, man, and muscular. It's like, it's just crazy to see how this sport has changed so much. be a great fight again ladies and gentlemen here we are getting ready to start round one the sixth fight of the night in the red corner we have Jonathan Quiroz and in the blue corner we have Felipe Alvarez and already Felipe's fans are chanting and that's I think about a quarter of the a quarter of this event here seems to be chanting for Felipe and the fight hasn't even started yep oh big hard smashing right Looking like Philippe is doing exactly what he's trained at, at, at Machado's. They go straight for the takedown, not going to exchange any hands. Try to get in his comfort zone and be on the ground. Did you see that uh, uh, John, somebody ate a knee? I think uh, Felipe ate one of Jonathan's knees. It looked like it sounded pretty loud. Yeah, Jonathan threw that looping right when followed up with a knee in it, and I'm sure it knocked some wind out of him. But it looks like he wants to try to keep... Uh, the fight on the ground, he probably feels more comfortable there, but I'm going to tell you one thing, Jonathan's going to stand up and bang with this guy. There we go. It looks like um, Felipe is trying to pass Jonathan's guard. It's really hard to see at this angle, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, it looks like it's going back and forth with these two on the ground. All right, Jonathan is back up. It looks like Felipe is doing traditional BJJ. He didn't use the cage much. He's got a slow left dropping. Um, he's got his hands down and it looks like to me that Jonathan's actually taunting him is not fearing any of his power He must feel something in there that we don't out see outside out here because his hands are down early in the fight Oh, that was a big takedown. Felipe had made the mistake of reaching back with his hand with his arm and giving Jonathan the advantage when he does that Yeah, that choke is not it's so hard to apply you have to have your hand enter and over you got to pull guard to make it it takes so much energy it's easy to rest in that position, chin down, turning into the elbow, and you can stay there a long time while your opponent is squeezing the hell out of you. So much energy. And now it looks like um, Felipe has Jonathan in an attempted guillotine choke. I can't quite see from this angle, but it looks like Felipe is using the cage to get up. And, and oh! a big slam. Let me tell you, that's what the cage is all about. You can train on the mat all you want, but if you don't have the cage to execute certain commands, you just don't have that, you don't have that training ability. And it looks like to me that Jonathan is not fearing this guy one bit. He ended that round with a smirk on his face, walking back to his corner. It looked like he hadn't even uh, started the fight yet. Let me tell you, Felipe had Jonathan at guillotine. It wasn't in that great because Jonathan will use the cage, put his pressure in the knee to the hip, turn him to his side and use the cage to inch him up and slam him in the end of the first round. You know their adrenaline is pumping and if he feels that confident to do that then, I got a feeling that Jonathan's going to come out and throw a barrage of punches and knees. I agree. He started that way uh, with the first round and I think he's probably going to start that way in the second round. 
um, because it brought him a lot of success. It doesn't look like he's too phased by Felipe's ground game, so we'll have to see what happens. I tell you though, I like this interim music. This is kind of our our generation music. I kind of relate to this. That's right. But these guys got to get up with the Joneses and stop using those chairs sitting down in between rounds. That's old school. The new generation is to keep your fighter standing, keep his feet up, keep the blood circulating so it doesn't coagulate in the knees. We're going into round number two. It looks like Philippe is ready, but I got a feeling Jonathan's going to come out barn burner today. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Beginning of round number two. Jonathan in the red and Felipe in the blue. Looks like they're keeping a respectful distance to each other. Jonathan's doing a good job circling, trying to find a right angle to perhaps throw, throw a punch uh, or a kick. Both these fighters are just waiting. You see Felipe inching his feet together, bending at the knees. He's looking to shoot a single at takedown. I guarantee you he shoots within the next two minutes. He's dropping that lazy jab. He's going for a shoot. He's not setting up the leg kick. That's a weak, soft leg kick. He wants to shoot it and take him down. Agreed, uh, and, 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 a, and a, 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 an unusual combination there by uh, by Jonathan, but it seemed to uh, distract Felipe and cause him to wind up uh, mounted on top of uh, Felipe. Right, well, Jonathan doing very well on the ground with Felipe, uh, keeping control. Now Felipe turning it over, going back up into the mount, trying to mount. Jonathan is back around. Jonathan putting pressure into Felipe. He's got to use the cage at this point. Inch his hip out and pull to the top. We really can't see. The crowd is on their feet. The chairs are in the air. This place is out of control. And it looks like he's got, uh, looks like Felipe has Jonathan in his guard and is tempting a guillotine choke. I don't know if it's just a head or it's a head and arm choke. But uh, looks like he has him in a guillotine choke. Well, Jonathan Westman has him in side control. He's putting pressure into the inside. Jonathan now with the guillotine. I can't quite tell if he's reversed it. Can you see where they're at? It looks like Felipe is trying to stand up from Jonathan's guard, and, and, but he is throwing punches to uh, Jonathan's body. Unless Jonathan has his head and arm. Oh, and a reversal. Nice reversal. Let me tell you, the crowd is on their feet, and we cannot see from here. But by the action of the crowd, they are going crazy. That's the end of round number two. These rounds get even better. These rounds are even getting better. The second round had more action than the first round with these takedowns and, and guillotine attempts and combinations. So look for an exciting third round for both these guys. Yep, and it's just seriously curious why Jonathan wants to keep going to the ground with the Machado black belt. Uh, it's pointless. It seems that he should keep it up. It seems like uh, Felipe is getting a little bit gassed over there. His corner is really working him. You can't have these guys sitting down in between rounds. If you do, if you notice when Jonathan's round, they have their legs elevated to keep the circulation going. If you sit them down, their knees are bent and their feet go straight down. The blood starts to collect in the ankles. Therefore, when they stand up, it's called numb fingers, where your legs actually feel numb when you stand up. That's a good point, Maverick. They gotta dig deep now for this third round. Yeah, I like to see more stand up from both guys. I like to see some more hardcore combinations, some more kicks and some knees, and a little bit less on the ground. It's been on the ground pretty much uh, this whole tight, continuing reversals. I wanna see you guys, guys sling some leather. I agree. Even though both these fighters were on the ground, they didn't do a lot of damage while they were on the ground, kind of hugging each other so tightly that they couldn't get the proper leverage to throw those punches. I think more damage can be done standing by both these guys uh, in the third round. Yeah, well, there's uh, Philippe with his little inside a low leg kick. Didn't do much damage, but you're going to try to hopefully see more combinations from Jonathan. I want to see it. Keep it on his feet. See some hands going. I want to see these guys sling some leather now amateur level they need to, to open up their arsenals and really start to do more no i agree and it looks like jonathan attempted a superman punch and uh felipe reversed him and took him down and he's now in jonathan's guard i hope the ref stands these two folks up if if no action starts to happen because uh this is the third round one of these fires needs to make a statement yeah this has turned into a jiu-jitsu match to me i want to see more you know actual fighting going on in the grappling they got going Oh, shit. <laughs> it, did, it did look like that uh, 
Jonathan had attempted a triangle. And now he's mounted Felipe and is throwing punches to up. Uh, referee stoppage. Referee stoppage. That's what I wanted to say. That's what I knew Jonathan needed to do was execute more combinations. I don't know if Felipe ran out of gas. We're going to have to go down there and get the official word. and Shanji Hiberio. I'm so happy to kick it here at TFA today and show you guys what I can do. About my opponent, she claims she's a black belt and a purple belt and something, it doesn't really matter. I'm just here to give you guys a good show. Hi, my name is Melissa Surreal. I fight out of the sweatshop gym in Long Beach. Uh, my coach is Bradley Critchfield. I really am looking forward to my first amateur fight, my first fight ever. I'm really happy to be doing it with TFA. I know that my opponent is Angela Hancock, but um, I'm ready and I'm ready to get off this uh, first win. Six. Step up. 122.6. Angela, you want to stay here, sweet? Step off for a second. 
Alright, still 127.4. Same thing, I don't know if you guys heard me when I said, but uh, you can take it as is. You can ask her to go cut that point four. I mean, if you don't want her to cut the point four, she can go cut it if she wants. Because if you get down to the 127, even, then you won't get a 30 day suspension. Okay, so it's up to you. It's up to you. In order to cut low, so you have to just cut point four. Okay? So you get, okay. So you get, so you, so you, you get, so you get, that's not going to be point four. I know you guys want it, but it's not. It is. I weighed myself in the bathroom and it was 127 with Mr. I don't have a, I don't have a female inspector here. If I did, I, I would do that. We got We can hold up. We have a it's point four. I mean, so it's up to you. Uh, it's a point four. It's pretty easy to cut. And you get you get up you get up to an hour. So it's a two ten. Okay. So uh, come back in time. Okay, you guys. Well, Jacob, here we go once again with our technical difficulties. I believe this is what most of these fans have been waiting for all night is to watch these ladies get down. Any trainer, any athlete from True Warrior Fitness, you know they bang over there. They came to split leather. All right, CFA fans, you're the event of the evening. Fighting out of the red corner, standing 5'4", 125 pounds, a mixed martial arts fighter. Fighting out of True Warrior Fitness, mixed martial arts in Hollywood, California. in the red corner and she's going to be fighting Melissa Sarial in the blue corner. This is the main event of the night. I don't think anybody has left this event yet waiting for this particular fight. I know both these fighters are pumped up. They've got different backgrounds. I think Angela, if I'm not correct, told us she was a break dancer in high school. Uh, that's when she came to LA to be a, a movie star and a singer and she was a break dancer. Well good for her. Now she can put MMA fighter on that uh, on that resume as well. Well, with Angela Hancock. Hi, Angela. At a True Warrior Fitness, Toby Hurst camp. Um, Angela, you are three and one year record. Yes. Although this is your first fight with TFA, yes. and you're coming to fight uh, Melissa Surreal. She's out of uh, Bradley Critchfield's uh, camp's uh, sweatshop, and this is her uh, uh, debut fight as an amateur. So, um, how have you prepared for tonight's event with TFA, uh, and what has Toby been working with you on? Not to give too much away, but you, know, you want to give us a little insight? Well, of course, I've been working on my punching, you know, and I've been working on my takedowns. Everything now kind of came together. I feel great, you know, my cardio feels great. Especially, uh, you know, I feel in the heart. I'm so happy to finally fight for TFA, so I'm really excited about that. She had done Shotokan, Karate, the Taekwondo. I think she said her father was an instructor. So she knows she's got a long history there. Yeah, so she's been around the martial arts game quite a few years. But like we all said, it doesn't matter how many belts you have. A fighter in a fight in a fighter is not something you can train for, either you have it or you don't. And you know what they say, punch a black belt in the face, he turns into a brown belt. Punch him in the face, he turns into a purple belt. And so on and so forth. So, uh... We'll see what happens here. Well, I tell you what's going to happen here. All these people are not standing on their seat for nothing. They want to see these lady champions, these fighters, get down here tonight at TFA. Now, it'd, great, it'd be great to see more female fighters. This is going to bring a whole new audience in here, a whole different energy level. So hopefully in the future we'll have more female fighters. Well, yeah, you're seeing the demographics change. You're seeing a wider variety of fans because of the female fighters, and people are realizing what it takes to do this sport, you know, is, is not a male, alpha male 
dominated ego sport. It takes a lot of training, a lot of different wide varieties of different people in this arena. That's the great thing about about MMA. I mean, look at this fight tonight. This this Melissa played tennis and did martial arts, but Angela did break dancing. Uh, a fighter earlier played rugby. All these people have different backgrounds, and they're applying all their skills to 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 mix martial arts. I'm with Melissa Surreal out of Bradley Critchfield's sweatshop. Melissa, welcome to TFA for your first fight. This Thank is your you first know. amateur fight. Yes, it is. Wow, this is great. And you know, this is only the second um, women's fight we've had in our history, so this is a big honor for you to be here with us. So tell me a little bit about how you prepared for tonight's event against Angela Hancock out of uh, Toby Greer's camp. Oh, uh, basically, I trusted a lot in my coaches and my coaches' uh, training. Um, they had me doing lots of uh, different drills on the ground, on my feet, any type of scenario that we could think of that might happen in case preparing for me for anything that might possibly come up. I feel very confident in my training. Well, they're bringing it. Athleticism, athleticism, athleticism. And that's what the sport drives and fuels on is being an athlete because mixed martial arts is all about being a well-rounded person emotionally, psychologically, and physically. You have to have sound mind and body to fight. Um, and I think in every fight, anyone who's ever fought knows that. Uh, it's just a basic principle of fighting, and it probably goes back to the martial arts days. Well, I tell you, the way this crowd looks tonight, this is going to be a fight whether they like it or not because these people have got the energy level in this place wound up on DEFCON 9 on that Richter scale. It's like a nuclear bomb is about to go off here in TFA 28. I still, I can't believe this energy level. It's 10.30 on a Friday night. These people are screaming and yelling as if they just woke it up and have the energy of, of, of a kid. But all these people here have worked a long week and they're here to see a fight and they're here to really show support for the fighters. Well, we're all going to give them all the support they need tonight because these ladies are putting it down, all the way down from the beginning to the end. And here we go. Melissa walking into the cage with sound, confidence, and style. And Melissa Sariel in the blue corner. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The beginning of round one. The last fight of the night. This is the seventh fight of the night. The electricity in here is so thick you could cut it with a knife right now. In anticipation of this female. Hey, let me tell you. Look at these two young ladies. Hands up, chin down. They're ready to get down. We're going to see right now if the martial artist hangs on and fights with the street fighter breakdancer. Street Fighter Breakdancer, I like that combination. Looks like Melissa came out with a, with a, with a leg followed by a, a, a punch. I tell you, look at Melissa's physique. Girl, that girl's throwing some straight punches, boy. This is going to be a good one. Both these ladies are exchanging. I like how they're both well trained with their hands. That just shows the, the training that they've been given. It's a nice low leg kick by Angela. And I know both these girls look like they're very muscular, well built. So those leg kicks have to hurt when they're landed right there on the thigh. You can hear those leg kicks all the way up here. Yeah, I like to see uh, uh, Melissa stand a little bit less square. She's very square with her opponent, makes for a larger target. It's a traditional martial arts stand that needs to be corrected in MMA. If you notice that Angela has more of a 45 degree, her hip is cutting her opponent in half, and her punches seem a little bit more effective at this point. Well, that's a good point, Maverick. I didn't even notice that until you just mentioned it. Yeah, she is a little square. That is a traditional martial arts stance. She needs to turn a little more um, and, and not expose herself so much with that square stance. But I tell you, both fighters evenly match at this point. Both throwing combinations. Nice leg check, leg check by Melissa. But that's a sharp right by Angela. She's throwing good straight rights and straight lefts. If you look at those, when Melissa's standing so square, you're going to see her start to go to her body if her coaching is right. I'd like to see Melissa, if she insists on standing that square, throw a combination and then do a takedown from that, because that's the perfect stance to shoot a takedown. 
Well, we haven't seen that, and we missed it. It looks like Melissa went down, but she's right back up. I think it was a slippage. I couldn't quite see it from here. But these ladies are giving a fight. They're punching, they're kicking. We're going to see what their ground looks like. The ladies have gone down. These ladies are slinging leather. It's great. One thing I'd like to see Melissa do is when she throws those kicks, not drop her hands, because that can be very dangerous. Oh, these ladies are throwing them in the last 10 seconds. What a great combination from both women. This has been an exciting round, number one. That was a great, that was a great first round. A lot of these, like, both these ladies showed a lot of technique. They had their hands up. They threw clean combinations. They threw leg kicks. Um, but again, to your point, uh, I think Melissa does need to change her stance a little bit. Yep, it's just my own personal opinion for her. For me, she's really thick in the thighs. When she stands squares like that, it gives such a large base, such a large target. I'd like to see more leg kicks from them powerful legs. I'd like to see her coach get her up with her leg kicks, some kicks to the head, kicks to the midsection, especially if she's going to stand square like that. Use the power and wind up. Well, like I said earlier, throw those combinations and then shoot the takedown because you're already in that position. But we'll have to see what happens. Both these fighters seem to like standing up for right now at least. Yeah, and Angela's combinations, nice straight punches, you know, the, to her Sharin, uh, Melissa's keeping her hands up where they need to be, but Angela's showing some pretty precise combinations from her hands. Let's all do the training that she's been getting at True Warrior Fitness uh, under, the, uh, under the guidance of Toby Greer, who is a, a staple here uh, at the TFA. Well, all of Toby's guys have, have come and represented themselves quite well here at TFA. And I'm sure he wouldn't bring no woman that's not going to do the same thing. Here we go, round number two. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we have Angela Hancock in the red corner. Melissa Serial in the blue corner. Both these fighters have decided to remain standing for, for, uh, for, the, for, for, the, for the fight so far. But we'll see if any of them decide to do some takedowns and showcase some of the ground skills that they have. Well, it's yet to be seen yet. The both ladies are just swinging leather. Combination, combination. Um, we're just going to have to see how this fight unfolds. This ladies want to punch it out. TFA fans are welcome for a punch out. Yeah, and again, I uh, have to see some more combinations for some of these. But it looks like these punches and kicks are landing. You can hear the slaps on their legs from all the way up here. Yes, Angela's got some nice, straight, linear punches. Good fall through. Keeps her hands up. Uh, it looks like Melissa's going to go for a takedown, but didn't quite have it. Uh, she pulled out. Yeah, she, she kind of paused there when she had the leg. Instead of taking advantage of having that leg and trying to take her down, she, she stopped. And I think uh, Angela was uh, smart enough to uh, spin out of it. Well, these ladies are showing great sportsmanship. Nice. That's what I wanted to see. I want to see Melissa use her powerful legs. Get that. that was a nice lead leg. Could have developed into a bigger knee. Angela needs to learn how to check those. I'm sure she does that over there. Inside low leg kick. These ladies are banging. I think they're going to bang the whole three rounds. I think they just feel more comfortable standing, and they're both in their comfort zone. So, and it seems to be working for, for both these two. So, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. But uh, I, I've got the fight kind of evenly matched so far. I don't know. What do you think, man? Well, I have to tell you the same thing. It's pretty even all the way around. They're punching, punch for punch, pound for pound. Looks like Melissa tried for a takedown. Beautiful knee with Angela. That was excellent. Good fall through with the combination. I tell you, these crowds on their feet, they are banging. These ladies are slinging leather here at TFA 28. This is a brutal fight. I do like the fact that Melissa is at least attempting to takedowns. They're trying to mix it up a little bit. I know she ate that last knee, and it looks like she may have felt that. But um, I, I like the fact that she's mixing it up a little bit. Yeah, she, you know, aside from her having a really square stance, you know, and not executing her leg power more, I mean, she's got those great powerful legs. I, want, I thought I would see a lot more, you know, low leg kicks or push kicks or something because the way she's built. But to neither of these ladies, both of their chagrin, they're giving one hell of a fight. They're standing up. They're punching. They're not running around, and they sure as hell are not slap fighting. No, these, both these two are highly trained fighters and that's being showcased with the technique that they have the combinations that they're throwing the leg kicks the punches they're clean they're crisp um, and that's due to the training that they've gotten respectively at uh, true warrior fitness and at the sweatshop well here we're going into round number three right now i believe the card's pretty much even this is going to be a really hard one to judge unless one of these ladies runs out of gas 
or one of them tries to execute different type of combinations, tries to do some takedowns, or tries to kick more, it's going to be a hard one to score. Oh, I agree. One of these fighters, if they run to win the fight, they're going to have to mix it up a little bit, um, show something a little bit different, or land a combination uh, for them to... For them to uh, stop the fight. But for right now, it's, it's kind of going back and forth, and both these fighters feel comfortable uh, staying on their feet. Yeah, well, look, Melissa looks like she's trying to give more legs, but Angela just great with that jab. Her jab is just so nice and linear. You know, I like the way she executes it. That's probably her forte. It's really good. She works the jab really, really nice. That might come from a kickboxing background, but I like to see Melissa use that leg power and develop some more leg kicks. At least she's keeping her hands up. Right, but listen, and eating a number of those jabs, and those things can just wear you down uh, in a fight. So Melissa's got to at least parry those or try and block them so she's not subject to them. Well, the problem is she's standing square, and Angela continues to touch on her nose time and time again so her shoulders are square. Melissa at least trying to take a takedown right here. Angela capitalizing, great time for an elbow. We can't take it in here. And I think Angela is, I mean, Melissa's just taking a word for word from them jabs from Angela. They're just starting to wear on her, and that's why she went into panic mode to try to do that takedown to get away from the jab. The problem with it is she attempted that takedown so close to the cage that Angela was able to utilize the cage to stand up and not being taken down by Melissa. Well, Angela's going to execute knees here. If I know Toby Greer, I know he works the cage and gives a lot of knees, and I know she's going to work the knees if she continues to keep her in the cage like this. Yes, I and mean, that's the best time to use knees when they're close like that, tangled up like that. And, a, and a, oh, looks like they've separated and now we're back to, to standing. You're going to see Angela go straight back to the jab again. Watch. Bank, there it is again and again. Problem is, Melissa is standing square and you can't defend the jab standing square. One of these fighters got to do something right now. Well, I hate to tell you right now, Angela's pulled a card on the door card and I believe the judges are going to give it to Angela. That'd be my guess as well.
Well, Jacob, here we go. professional cut men. They will be here to help wrap. You do not have to use them. If you have your own coach that you want to be wrapped by, you can do that. But No, no, no. Excuse me, Brad. No, because I'm paying for it, so take advantage of it, all right? <laughs> use the shit up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs>
Because you make me smile